Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers we're back with you guessed it another video I got a fun video for you today we're gonna be talking about dinosaur games yeah we're gonna be talking about the best dinosaur games who doesn't love dinos so we can all agree that dinosaurs are pretty freaking cool right despite the fact that they've been gone for a very very long time I'd still say that they're some of the coolest creatures that ever walked the earth and I find dinosaurs and dinosaur bones actually incredibly fascinating. Over my very long seven day car trip I actually went to this giant like dinosaur museum over in Utah that spans all the way from Utah to Colorado and it got me thinking. What are some of the best dinosaur games? What are some of the best games that are actually centered around dinosaurs? And so yeah, that's really what we're going to be talking about today. What are the best games to play if you're a huge fan of dinosaurs? For this list, I'm looking at games that are specifically centered or mostly centered around dinosaurs, not games that feature dinosaurs. Otherwise, like Tekken, Bonk, and even Astro's Playroom would be in here, and that's not what I'm trying to look at. I'm trying to look at those games where dinosaurs are a huge focal point to the game. This list is in no particular order, and for a few of these entries, I'm just going to have an entire franchise that is applicable. And as always, I have not played every single game. I totally could be missing a game or several games, and so let me know down below any games you think I'm missing. And with that, let's get right into the list. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Any support is truly greatly appreciated. I'm a one-man army here. don't got no team or anything like that. It's really just me, so I got the Patreon and the Super Thanks. And I really appreciate all the nice and mean comments I get. Before we begin, I do want to give an honorable mention. I'm going to give a shout out to Star Fox Adventures. That game is pretty centered around dinosaurs taking place on like a dinosaur planet. And you fight dinosaurs, you got dinosaur buddies. Yeah, it's pretty dinosaur centric. But to be honest, I've never really loved this game. I always thought that it was just a bit boring and bland. And the pacing wasn't very good. And I just didn't care all that much for the story. And that's why it's not making this list top 10, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's a bad game. I don't think it's a great game, though, either. It's just kind of okay. Now, when I started making this list thinking about dinosaur games, what came to my mind immediately for best dino games is Dino Crisis 1 and 2. I love the first two Dino Crisis games. They're some of my favorite games on the PS1. And when it comes to good dinosaur games, it really doesn't get much better than Dino Crisis 1 and 2. There was Dino Crisis 3, but that game's not very good. And there was even Dino Stalker, which wasn't terrible, but I'm not going to include it for today's list. I actually did rank all the Dino Crisis games a few years ago, so... If you want to see me go more in depth with these games, there's that video to watch. Now when it comes to the original Dino Crisis, Shinji Mikami was actually a huge part of the game, the forefather of Resident Evil. He kind of wanted Resident Evil but with dinosaurs instead, and that's the best way to describe the original Dino Crisis. It's a survival horror game that takes place on an abandoned island instead of a spooky mansion and it sees you playing as Regina, this red-haired special forces woman who goes in to go investigate just what the hell is even going on here when, yeah, a bunch of dinosaurs show up and then you gotta try to get out of there. When it comes to the core gameplay, it really is that survival horror bread and butter where it's tank controls, fixed camera angles, you'll fight off some dinosaurs, you really gotta manage your resources and your inventory, and then there's puzzles. Lots and lots of puzzles in this game and a good amount of backtracking as well. And the formula totally works for this game. It doesn't work as well as Resident Evil 1 and 2, and even though I do love this game, I'll say it's nowhere near as good as RE 1 and 2. The pacing is just kind of all over the place, and there's just way too many puzzles in this game. There are so many puzzles, it's not even funny, but there are plenty of tense moments as well. I mean, I'm sure we can all remember when the dinosaur busts in, or the first time you get jumped by the raptors. It's actually pretty tense stuff. The combat is fine, the puzzles, even though they're incredibly prevalent, aren't terrible. And I think the game actually has a really solid atmosphere. It totally captures that Resident Evil atmosphere at the very least just with dinosaurs. And it looked good for the time. And then we have Dino Crisis 2 which is actually pretty different from the first one. It's not a survival horror game at all. Even though it does have tank controls and fixed camera angles, it's much more of an action game. And you kill a lot of dinosaurs in this game. The story's a lot more wild as well with time distortion and it sees Regina and a few others just trying to get back to the present and yeah there's a lot of dinosaurs to stop them. And it's kind of funny just how different Dino Crisis 2 really is from the first one. I know Dino Crisis' identity is in survival horror but the second game yeah they totally drop like all the survival horror stuff. There's no inventory management, they give you plenty of ammunition, there's no puzzles to solve, you even get like combos for killing dinosaurs in succession. There are way more dinosaur types in this game as well. The first game only had a few, this game's got like a dozen. And you even get points if you're able to kill them quickly in succession and go through areas without getting hit. Like, they just want you to annihilate everything and you get just a ton of cool weapons in this game. 
And yeah, this game is actually just a ton of fun. I was really surprised with just how much fun I had with this game when I first played it. I think this game's actually quite underrated. I don't hear that many people talk about it, even in relation to the first game. And I think it's because it's so drastically different from the first one, especially in the tone and atmosphere. And if you're looking for one of the best action games on the PS1, this is totally it. Both of these games absolutely deserve a remake these days. I mean, people have been begging for a Dino Crisis remake forever, but I would love to see the second one get remade as well. If you're looking for some of the best dinosaur games, period, Dino Crisis 1 and 2 should be at the top of your list. Alright, so here's a less recognizable dinosaur game, and it's Fossil Fighters for the DS. Now, I know Fossil Fighters is also a series of games, but I've only ever played the original DS game. I actually really enjoyed this game as a kid, and nowadays, yeah, it was actually pretty decent. I'm not going to act like it's one of the best RPGs on the DS, but if you're looking for best dinosaur games, I mean, Fossil Fighters, yeah, it's pretty alright. And I mean, when it comes to dinosaur RPGs, there aren't exactly a lot of contenders, and so Fossil Fighters is near the top of that list. That and I guess that part of Live a Live. Now, when it comes to what kind of RPG this is, this is more of a monster catching game. It is quite comparable to Pokemon, actually, as you get new dinosaurs. There's even types like fire and water. And there are even type advantages here. That might have been an extremely reductive way to describe the game, but this isn't a full length review. We're talking about the best dinosaur games. I actually thought it was pretty fun to go to the dig sites and then dig up the dinosaur bones and bring the dinosaurs back to life. And I'm sure it's something a lot of people wish we could do in real life. But I remember this gameplay loop being pretty decent. And even nowadays, I think it still mostly holds up. It does get a bit tedious and the battles aren't all that complex. In fact, the battling is pretty basic. Like, for the most part, it's relatively simplistic. There are a few wrinkles here and there, but I'm not going to act like this is one of the most complex battle systems in an RPG because it's not. Despite that, though, I think its simplicity works in its favor. It creates a decent gameplay loop. The story is kind of there. Okay, it's certainly there. I just never really cared all that much about it, and I don't think most people who played Fossil Fighters, you know, love it for its story. Man, they want to dig up some dinosaurs. They want to fight with the dinosaurs, and when it comes to that, this game is good. It does have plenty of issues. I remember the pacing's not great. It does get pretty old. And I feel like it just doesn't really have the gameplay chops to hold up as long as the game goes. I'm pretty sure I never beat it as a kid just because I got kind of bored of it. I also remember thinking it was a little too much like Pokemon. And even nowadays, I'm like, yeah, it, it, it is pretty much like Pokemon. I mean, I know it's also by Nintendo, but it feels like at times the game is missing a little bit of an identity. Stuff like Digimon and even Monster Rancher do throw their own sauce in or some kind of unique hook. And with Fossil Fighters, it really is just that you're digging up the dinosaurs. How you get them is a little different but the battles really just feel like they don't do anything all that different from any other RPG but despite all that I'd still say the game is decent it's a decent little RPG and if you like dinosaurs I think you'll enjoy the game maybe the other fossil fighter games are better maybe they have more of an identity I'm willing to bet they are better and have an identity it's just I haven't tried those will I ever try them maybe I mean I love dinosaurs so you never know but I'm sure down below there'll be somebody telling me that oh fossil fighters is great you just don't understand it or go play the 3ds one that one is really really good or something like that so let me know how y'all are feeling about fossil fighters down below we're just gonna move on to the next game here so for this entry we're actually gonna be talking about some multiplayer games I don't talk about multiplayer games a ton but this is a series that I actually do have some experience with and that is the primal carnage series now for the unfamiliar primal carnage is an asymmetrical multiplayer game that sees a bunch of humans going up against some dinosaurs. I played the original way back like 10 plus years ago and thought it was actually a good amount of fun. And then I remember a few years later a sequel came out, Primal Carnage Extinction, but I remember it was pretty similar to that original game. So when it comes to the core gameplay, when I played it, there was just Team Deathmatch. I mean, that was the hook of this game was dinosaurs versus humans. When you were a human, there were several different classes you could choose from, and it was a first-person shooter. And then when you were the dinosaur, there were other classes to choose from, and it was in third person. And it actually was decently balanced, at least I remember it being decently balanced, and yeah, it really was good fun. Playing as the dinosaurs and ripping people apart was great, but the first-person shooter gameplay actually held up as well, and the dinosaurs and maps were dynamic enough that the game had a little bit of a hook. I'm not gonna act like it was this just absolutely amazing multiplayer experience that you got to go out and try. It's one of the best multiplayer games ever. No, it's absolutely not that. And there's a reason that Primal Carnage is pretty much dead. It's, it's extinct at this point. I doubt anybody is playing either of these games. And if they are, they're part of a very small, passionate fan base, I imagine. These games actually were good fun, and that's why I was a little excited when I saw that Primal Carnage is actually kind of coming back. There's a new game coming out. 
and that is titled Primal Carnage Evolution. And I don't know when it's coming out, hopefully sooner than later, and I hope it recaptures the fun that the original game and its sequel had. Like yeah, these games were kind of stupid, but they were the kind of stupid where you can have a few hours of fun at the very least. And speaking of multiplayer games that probably don't have anybody playing them that feature dinosaurs, I will give a shout out to Dino D-Day. That game was really freaking stupid taking place in World War II. Whereas the last ditch effort, the Nazis create dinosaurs to fight everybody off. I played a few games and yeah, it's pretty freaking stupid. It runs on the Source engine and I really, really doubt anybody's playing this one. But for this entry, yeah, I'm going with probably extinct multiplayer games that feature dinosaurs. These were pretty cool and I'll check out the new Primal Carnage if it ever comes out. Now, when thinking about dinosaurs, something else that came to mind was Yoshi. Yoshi's a dinosaur, what about any Yoshi games? Well, I'm not gonna choose every Yoshi game, I'm gonna go with what in my opinion is the best of the Yoshi games, and that's Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. Like, there are plenty of other good Yoshi games, but today I really wanna focus on Super Mario World 2. I love this game, I think it's one of the best platformers for the Super Nintendo, and that really is saying something. And to be honest, it feels like a lot of later Yoshi games are just very derivative of this original game because it was as good as it is. I mean, for a Super Nintendo game, it looks incredible. I love the art style, the art direction. It looks so good. The music is just excellent as well. That presentation was really on point. And then when it came to the gameplay, oh, it absolutely holds up where you got to get baby Mario to the end of every level. And yes, if you get hit, you got to go save the fucking baby. But... Other than the incessant crying, I think the gameplay really actually is solid. This is a good platformer, there's a lot of secrets and nooks and crannies. These levels are actually very well designed, the game is a great pace, a solid tone. It's cute and whimsical and fun, it has a lot of charm. The story, it's pretty basic, it's barely even there, but I still like it. And it's kind of crazy how well this game really holds up. A lot of platformers from this era might not hold up as well as this. I mean, I was a kid and I love this game. I'm an adult and I love this game actually still. It really is fun. Throwing the eggs is fun. The controls are buttery smooth and still feel great. And then like I said, the pacing is really good in this game. A bunch of the levels are just really freaking good. Not every level's like amazing perfection 10 out of 10, but a lot of levels in this game are some of the best, if not the best levels in any Yoshi game. The level design, it really does prop everything up. Not that it needed anything to prop it up, the game is really good in its own right, but that level design, it's very good. Maybe one day I'll rank the Yoshi games, I have not tried every single one of them, but I've been meaning to get around to it, and if you're looking for a game about a dinosaur, and haven't tried Super Mario World 2, I really think you should. I know Yoshi isn't the most obvious pick when you think of dinosaur games, but he is a dinosaur, all of his games really center around him and baby Mario for the most part. And usually, it's pretty good when it comes to quality. This is always going to be my favorite though, and it's the one I'll recommend the most. So for this entry, I got the Turok series of games. Now, when thinking about dinosaur games, Turok came to mind pretty quick. I mean, I love that original game on the 64, but the second one is actually pretty good as well. I've never tried the third one one day, but there's also Turok Evolution. You kill plenty of dinosaurs in that one. And then there's the 2008 reboot that is, yeah, that's not so good. But all of these games do feature dinosaurs and you do get to kill plenty of them. And for the most part, I think the Turok series is pretty solid. I think that when it comes to quality, it's mostly consistent. Again, I haven't played the third one and the 2008 game is, yeah, that's not so great. But Evolution and the first two, oh yeah, they're pretty good. They're all first person shooters and they're about getting dropped into these relatively large environments that are sometimes even non-linear and you're told to pretty much just go through them. There's plenty of collectibles, especially in the second game, and plenty of things that want to kill you, including our favorite, the dinos. And when it comes to your weaponry, you get plenty of awesome weapons. You're not just out here with like bows and arrows. I mean, at first you start with that, but you eventually get some really modern and even futuristic weapons. The Turok series was really one of the first series in games to have gun porn because of just how great the guns are, especially in Turok 2. And what's great is that these games were all pretty challenging, especially for the time. Like you come back nowadays and you're like, damn, Turok is not messing around, especially the second game. In fact, I would say that the second game is one of the hardest games for the Nintendo 64, and even nowadays it is quite challenging. You fight plenty of futuristic dinosaurs as well that can actually use weapons and fuck your shit up. It's not just, oh, they're going to charge at you or something. There's plenty of that, especially in the original game, but a lot of the dinosaurs actually have advanced weaponry, and it's not only kind of funny, but it is pretty cool. 
You even get to ride dinosaurs and mess shit up with them. There is quite a lot of key hunting in the first two games, especially in the second game, and you're totally going to need a walkthrough as these levels are just absolutely massive. But outside of the two originals, there is Turok Evolution, which is pretty decent. I'm not going to act like it's a great first person shooter even for the time, but it's not awful. And the 2008 game, kind of the less said about it, the better. I mean, it's pretty funny when you're just like this big macho military dude going around slitting raptors throats and just doing these wonky as hell animations but it really just didn't feel like they understood exactly what made Turok Turok to begin with. I hope one day we get a new Turok game some kind of reboot I don't really think the games need a remake just some kind of brand new direction for the series because I absolutely think there is potential for this series I mean people love those original games for a reason and I think that Turok could really succeed with a modern audience and an interesting new direction but when it comes to best dinosaur games if you haven't tried Turok any of them really, I recommend you give them a shot. The first three are readily available on modern platforms. Evolution and the 2008 game aren't, but I mean, you're not really missing much. There is also the multiplayer game Rage Wars, but I'm really not going to bring that up, and the Game Boy games that I have no experience with. One day, I'm going to rank the Turok games. A few people have asked me. It's going to happen eventually. I just need to play that third one, but till the time comes, I'm going to say Turok 1 and 2, totally great dinosaur games that you should try. Alright, a list like this you knew Jurassic Park had to show up somewhere. When it comes to dinosaurs, it really doesn't get much more iconic than Jurassic Park. We could be here all day talking about Jurassic Park, whether it's the movies, the merch, the universal ride, and of course the games. When it comes to the Jurassic Park games, I'm picking just one, and it's going to be the one I have some experience with and actually enjoy, and that is Jurassic World Evolution. That is the management game that came out in 2018. This game, if you don't know, was developed by Frontier, who really are the masters when it comes to construction and management simulations. They created Roller Coaster Tycoon, and those games are great, and this game, oh yeah, it absolutely slaps. If you're looking for like a really serious hardcore dinosaur game, but you don't really care for survival games or action games, then this might be the game for you, where you have to manage basically your own Jurassic Park. And you quickly realize that managing a park is the opposite of easy. There are so many things you have to contend with, actually. And while you can mess around in, like, the sandbox mode, which is probably what I've done most of the time, and that is good fun, there is actually a campaign here where you have to, like, fulfill these contracts for, like, science, security, and entertainment. And it can actually get quite challenging, much more challenging than I expected it to be. And I was like, damn, running the park, it, this is no fucking joke. But you get to bring in plenty of dinosaurs. There's actually a lot of fan service to the Jurassic Park movies and other Jurassic Park media. And once I really came to grips with how the game works, how its systems work, and how the interface functions, I actually thought it was quite enjoyable. I know there's a sequel to this game that apparently is a lot better, but I have no experience with that game. I only have knowledge of this first game, and when it comes to Jurassic Park games, this really is like the only one that I've played that I actually enjoy. I know that there is a Jurassic Park game coming that is like a survival game by Saber Interactive, and that has a lot of potential. That could actually be really good, but for me personally right now, my favorite is Jurassic World Evolution. It's one of my favorite management games, and if you're someone who is looking for a different kind of dinosaur game, then I think you should really check this one out. It's pretty cheap nowadays, and it really is one of the better Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, whatever the thing's called, games. And so here we have the latest game on the list, Exo Primal. I know, you probably forgot this game even exists. This was Capcom's weird live service dinosaur game that came out last year and has since stopped getting new updates. Like, it's not a totally dead live service, they're not shutting it down anytime soon, at least it seems that way, but it won't be getting any new content. But I made sure to try it a few months ago while there was still a decent player base, and yeah, it is actually pretty decent, but the whole game is just kind of baffling. Like, what led Capcom to making this decision for this game, or taking this direction with this game a live service dinosaur game who asked for this we were all asking for dino crisis and this certainly isn't that it is a bit more comparable to dino crisis 2 because you just absolutely annihilate dinos this game actually does have a full-length story with cutscenes characters world building there's actually quite a bit to this game's story and you get all the cutscenes as you play through the game and level up and it's just really odd, like how many live service games have this much story, this many cutscenes? I know Conquered has cutscenes, but who cares about that game? This game is something ridiculous, like 10 hours of cutscenes, and obviously I didn't see all of it, I didn't play that much of the game, but I found it decently intriguing. When it comes to the actual gameplay, yeah, it was just really odd. 
Like, it feels like they wanted to make something that stood out from all the other live service games, but it stands so far out that I can't even put it into a box. I can't say it really is comparable to, like, any other live service game, and I don't mean that in a good way. It's like a PvE, but then a PvP game as well. You, like, killed plenty of dinosaurs, but you're racing another team to see who can kill the dinosaurs faster, and then you actually end up facing off at the very end. Something really weird is that when you start the game, you really only have this one game mode, and it's decent enough, but it does get pretty old pretty quick but if you keep playing more and more you level up a bunch you actually unlock more game modes and these game modes are way more interesting way more fun and they just get absolutely loony where it's just raining dinosaurs from the sky you get a bunch more classes and weapons like it's a lot more interesting and the game can actually get pretty fun. I mean, when you're just annihilating dinos, literally hundreds of dinos, just wiping them out with these big ass weapons and everyone on your team is kicking ass, you're just destroying everything and you win the match. Yeah, it feels really good. This game actually does have a decent enough gameplay loop. I don't know why they would lock all of the game modes behind story progression, which is basically level progression. But hey, if you're looking for a modern game where you kill lots of dinosaurs and something you can play with your friends, currently it's not going to get much better than Exoprimal. Go play it while you can. I have a feeling this game is going to get shut down in the future. I mean, this game just doesn't really have that much of an active player base at this point, and live service games literally live and die by their players. Yeah, there's a dedicated, passionate fan base here, but... All I'm saying is, enjoy it while it lasts. I'm glad I got to try it, but I don't see myself ever going back to it again. It was good fun, though. And so here we have a game you might not have initially thought of, and that is Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. Yes, that's a very long title, and this is based off of the 2005 Peter Jackson King Kong movie. And I know since then there's been plenty of Kong movies, Kong-related media, but I still have a soft spot for this game. And yes, while the game does center around King Kong, who in fact is not a dinosaur, what are you doing a majority of this game? You're actually fighting dinosaurs. When you're in first person and it's like the survival game, you're fighting dinosaurs a lot of the time. And when you're King Kong, you're fighting dinosaurs pretty much the entire time outside of the last part of the game. And so yeah, I'd say enough dinosaurs show up to the point that this is a dinosaur game. It's actually a pretty good game as well. As far as movie license games go, this is one of the better ones, especially from the 2000s. It actually has the movie cast come back to reprise their roles, which I think is pretty cool, and the voice acting is decent enough here, but when it comes to the gameplay, it really isn't what you would expect when you're... Playing as Jack Driscoll, it is a first person like survival shooter where you actually have to manage some resources, you actually have to fight off this just really dangerous environment. There are plenty of traps, plenty of hazards, and the environment is very dangerous. And of course, dinosaurs and other creatures show up. And these creatures naturally, you know, kind of want to eat you or make you their lunch, and so you got to stop them. You get to actually fight off the dinos and other creatures, and the combat is decent enough here. The first-person gameplay, yeah, it's actually alright. There are segments where you get to play as Kong as well, and these are quite fun. These are actually a real highlight where you get to go around just messing shit up. It's pretty rare in games when they let you just actually be the giant monster and destroy everything outside of like those Godzilla fighting games and this is a pretty good time. You actually get to just totally mess up some of these dinosaurs where you like break their jaw in half and there's some really sweet executions out here. The game has a good pace, it's got a decent length to it, it's longer than the movie and the movie was like three hours long. But I will say it follows the movie pretty closely. I mean, obviously they take a few liberties, but if you know what happens in the movie, you know some of the plot beats, yeah, they really do follow it. I'm not going to act like this is one of the best licensed games ever. It's not, but it is actually better than you'd expect. It's certainly better than any of the other King Kong games we've ever gotten. I mean, I know there are some coming out in the future, but who knows if they'll actually be as good as this game. And just for reference, I always played the GameCube version of this game. It is available on just tons of platforms, and I can't speak on any of the other platforms, but I have heard the DS version in particular is pretty bad. So if you're going to try this game, the GameCube version's good, but I'm sure the 360 version is the best version. It's the only one in HD, so it's probably the best one. But still, it's a good one. So from one unconventional game to the next, I have the Monster Hunter series. I know what you might be thinking, uh, dinosaurs? Monster Hunter? What are you talking about? And you know what? This is a bit of a stretch, a bit of a reach, but I mean, Monster Hunter, it's basically dinosaurs, right? We can agree that it's adjacent enough, it's close enough to dinosaurs that yeah, it basically is dinosaurs. Obviously, there's a lot more creatures and monsters. 
and some of them are definitely leaning on the fantasy side rather than being a realistic dinosaur or anything like that. I mean, there's nothing here that's really like a realistic dinosaur, but again, it's close enough to the point that, yeah, I'm going to say that the Monster Hunter series is dinosaur games. It's a bit more on the fantasy side, but these are dinosaur games, and they're fantastic, especially Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise. These two really are the best games in the series. There's also the spin-offs like Monster Hunter Stories and Stories 2, but I'm really just talking about World and Rise today. You can play these games with up to four players, and it really is some of the most fun you can have in any RPG, whether it's an action RPG or a multiplayer RPG. It really doesn't get much better than this. There's a bunch of different weapons to choose from. They all play extremely different. There's tons upon tons of monsters to hunt. They have just almost an infinite amount of replayability and content. I mean, you can just do these hunts over and over, try to get all of the gear. If you want to just hunt everything once, you'll be in these games a very long time, especially if you get the DLCs. Like, these games just go crazy with their content. I know people that have put over a thousand hours into these games, and I mean... I can see why, there's just so many things to hunt, and the game is genuinely incredibly fun. Hunting down the monsters, and getting into these really dynamic fights, like the fights are really epic, they go on a long time, the monsters can just absolutely whoop your ass, and you really gotta whittle them down. If you wanna feel powerless compared to these giant monsters, oh, these are the games to absolutely play. You probably already know all about Monster Hunter, so I'ma end it there and say, if you're looking for some unconventional dinosaur games, the Monster Hunter series is definitely a series that should be checked out. And so the last game we're talking about today is the game you probably expected to see on this list the most, and that is Ark. When it comes to dinosaur games, I don't think any dinosaur game has ever been as popular as Ark. When it initially released as Ark Survival Evolved, now it's Ark Survival Ascended. I can confidently say that Ark really is like the best-selling dinosaur game, and it's one of the most popular survival games of all time, and that really is saying something. There have been a lot of popular survival games throughout the years that people have gone crazy for, but Ark, Ark has just always managed to keep a very consistent audience, and I'm certain when Ark 2 finally launches, whenever it actually does, it's going to be wildly successful and popular. I myself haven't played a ton of Ark, I'm just not really big on survival games, but even I can see that Ark is actually pretty good. It certainly takes a good amount of time to get going, but when it comes to addicting survival game loops, man, Ark, it has like all of them, where you'll just want to keep playing and crafting and creating new things, and you'll get stronger and stronger. Eventually, you can ride the dinosaurs. What was originally a huge threat to you no longer is. Like, Ark is a very addicting game. And there is a reason why so many people have put like hundreds of hours into this game. Like it's a ton of fun, especially when you're with friends and you've all got the same mindset of like, we got to get stronger, we got to craft, we got to do A, B, C. And the loops that this game utilizes are just really compelling. Like a lot of people went nuts for Power World earlier this year. I hate to break it to them. A lot of Power World's loops are just lifted straight from Ark. Like when you level up your base, you get new things. That's from Ark. And trust me, it's done a lot better in Ark. There are so many creatures in this game as well. There's like 200 different creatures. Most of them are dinosaurs, but there's plenty of other crazy creatures here. And you can try to tame as many of them as you want. And it's really cool stuff. There's also been a bunch of expansions throughout the years for this game. And there really just is so much content that it's not even funny. Again, it does take a bit of time to get going. I remember playing with a few friends and them just kind of giving up relatively early since it does have a sluggish start. But once it gets going, oh, it really gets going. And it becomes incredibly satisfying to see just how far you've come, how far your base has come. And now you got a bunch of dinosaurs working with you. And there's just not that many survival games that are as good as Ark. I know there are plenty of people that have been hating on Ark. They hate the developer, the early access model, and all all that shit but you gotta admit there's a reason why so many people do love Ark there's a reason why so many people still play Ark it's because it just has it just has it man it's got that sauce it's maybe it's the dinosaurs but it's got those good gameplay loops that make you want to come back and play more and more and really when it comes to dinosaur games I mean you gotta mention Ark like immediately so that's why I made it last on the list but if you're looking for a modern dinosaur game and haven't tried this yeah, I don't know what else you could be looking for. I mean, I mentioned a bunch of great dinosaur games, but Ark really is one of those must plays if you like dinosaurs. As long as you got the PC for it. I know it is on console, but I really don't trust those console versions. I mean, it already ran like ass on PC. But anyway, discussion for a different day. Ark, one of the best dinosaur games of them all.
And that's it for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope it was what you were looking for. Let me know down below if there's any dinosaur games I missed. But if you made it to this part of the video, you should comment our secret code word that you made it to the end. The code word is extinction. Hopefully you don't go extinct. Stay safe, everyone. See ya.